people, we are back at to the podcast episode 150. That round is a number. Big deal. It is. It's a big deal. It's a round number. I was thinking 100, 150, 200, 100. Like, so 150, shout out to us, um, your boy International Walk and the co hostess. The co hostess with the most. So shout out to us for showing up every week, 150 straight time. Well, straight, you know, that's give or take because we might have had some life shit going on or some other stuff going on, a vacation or something. But, but we made it happen. Yeah, we made it happen. We gave y'all 150. And we don't owe none. <laughs> so that's just that. Um, but it's your boy, International Walk. It's your girl, Tasha, co-hosts with the most. And we are back for another episode of us. Um, what was I about to say? Damn, lost myself there. Where can they find us? Oh, yeah. You guys can find us on Facebook, uh, act2thepodcast.com, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Podcast Index, Podcast Attic. Um, Pod Chaser, Player FM, and fuck, and fuck, y'all also can find us on iHeartRadio and Apple Podcasts. Ooh, God ooh. damn it, iHeartRadio and Apple Podcasts. Ooh, God ooh. damn it, most of y'all watch podcasts on iHeartRadio and Apple Podcasts and Spotify. We're on all three, so yes. go get that. Yes, go get that. baby, yes. iHeartRadio, thanks to me, thanks to her, iHeartRadio. Apple Podcasts. I'm Bam! Proud of you. That's what happens when you stay consistent. See, I'm that's what it's all about. Showing up every week, staying consistent, and boom, look at that. All the spots that you y'all had to go find us on, the Amazon Music, the Google Podcasts, the YouTubes, all that. Guess what? We're on the most watch platforms out there, and that's iHeartRadio and Apple Music. Bam! Bam, I'm proud of you. Get right to it. How do you feel? I feel great. Um, I feel great, of course, you know, coming back off the holiday. Um, mentally, mentally, I'm a nine. Um, had a great time um, seeing our family. Um, some of you may or may not know, some of our family moved away um, in July. Um, so we decided to travel to them to spend Thanksgiving. This was our first Thanksgiving away. We spent Thanksgiving like usually with the same people in different houses. Um, majority of the time we've hosted, but we've been at other people's houses, but this is our first ever thanks what this is our first ever holiday away. Majority of the time we hosted? Yeah, majority of the time we hosted. <laughs> okay. Yeah, majority of the time we hosted at one of our houses somewhere. Um yeah, but yeah, uh I don't really like that. Mm, <laughs> well you know as we're older now I'm sitting here thinking like damn now why did we do that yeah and last year we, it was just the two of us you know mm -hmm. actually so this is last year was just the two of us the year before that uh, we did have Thanksgiving together the year prior to that was the COVID year so we like you know we was trying to stay safe and healthy so Thanksgiving the last few years has been a little different but oh, we grateful had downstairs at our dining room table yeah just us yeah, yeah. Yeah, so extremely grateful. Um, but I'm a nine. Um, y'all, I, I effed up. You know, I um, uh, I had an incident that happened, and I wasn't forthcoming with my husband about it. Um, I, you know, I banged up a car a little bit, and I knew he was gonna be upset. But still, I should have told him about it. And I mean, of course, I knew he would find out anyway. So I hate to, I hate for it to be tension between us anyway and i hate to be the cause of it and i just hate to make him upset because he has come so far with managing his and when i say this i don't mean like he had outbursts of anger but managing because when i was saying managing his anger it, it implies right like the classes yeah future. like what was he some monster no but he's come really really far and it's not fair when i don't give him the chance or the grace to show that you know he's a different person now and me just you know I, I just i should have been more forthcoming nevertheless you know so that's why i say a, you know a nine because we're in a better place now you know it was less than 24 hours ago but we're in a better place now and I, i'm just extremely grateful for the man that he is and i do want to say this i want to give him his props because he made a lot of sacrifices physically and financially for us to enjoy the holiday the way that we did and i am just i owe him big time y'all i got i got some ideas in my head um you know and of course as my husband he doesn't expect 
me to pay him back for anything. And when I say, you know, owe him, I don't mean money or anything like that. But, you know, I just want to um, show my appreciation. And, um, yeah, so just want to give him the, his props. But, again, I'm a nine because, you know, we're in a better place. But I still, I don't like to, I, I got to work, continue to work on me um, and not handle things the way that I did. Um, financially, we are nine. We spent a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> she's been always a 10. Now she's seen yeah, how many $40 baby. got filled off. Yeah, <laughs> not only that, like we made, well, we'll get more into that. We kind of made some plans and then had to pivot our plans. And it just, you know, it, it may have cost us more than what we expected. But I read a post, my sister posted something the other day that she got from somewhere and was like, you know, people say happy money doesn't buy happiness. And maybe it doesn't for some. I'm not saying it's the cure all. But it allows you to be able to afford the resources and the conveniences in life that can help make you happy. So I'm extremely grateful for that. I don't take it for granted. Um, but yeah, it's, we're nine. We're nine. An older person once told me, you spend your money on what makes your life convenient. You shouldn't be sad about that. And that's yeah. the truth. Like, I don't get upset about convenience, whether it be... Uh, anything, anything that's going to make it convenient for us. Yeah, like, I have some apprehension and hesitation, but it's like, nah, like, I'll pull the trigger quick on that because convenience and time is... is Inv everything. Invaluable, yeah. yeah. It's, and you don't get that back, and I know that <laughs> wholeheartedly, no pun intended, but, um, yeah, it, you don't get time back, and fuck that. Like, I'll... Yeah, and you think to yourself, the time that you would spend doing something trying to save money it's like you're gonna make money back again but you're never gonna get that time back you know mm -hmm. god willing you're gonna get another paycheck you can continue to save you can continue and it's not like you know we thank god we have savings and resources but i'm just you know extremely grateful um that that we had the resources to be able to make life convenient for us but therefore we're nine um Work is a 10 because I ain't been at work, but I'm I'm happy. You know, I left work happy on a good note, did what I was supposed to do, handle things. And um, my team works really, really hard and they're getting some time off. Um, So uh, work is a 10. And then physically, physically, I'm a nine. I'm tired, Um, you know, just from travel days are, are busy Um, and <laughs> had so much fun with um our babies and had a football game. This was the first time in my life that I played. When I say a real football game, okay, it was just us. But I'm talking about, like, two teams. It was three on three. But, like, really defense, you know, a little bit of tackling. Um, It was so much fun. And I we, I think we all walked away injured. Um, My baby foot was hurt and he fell in the mud. Um, my niece, her, her, thigh, her, her upper thigh was scratched up. Don't know how that happened. My other niece had some scratches on her rib cage. Um, my other niece, her knee was messed up. And then my nephew, his elbows. <laughs> but we had so much fun. And those are the moments that, like, I hope. Because I, I think about things that I've done in my life as kids with my family. And I remember those things. Like, being, you know, 8, 9, 10 years old. There are memories that stick in my head. And I hope these are the moments in life that they remember. Yeah, you can buy them stuff. And we can go places. But the seeing the fun that they had. The the competitive spirit that they get they from are, me. They are, they are so competitive. They are, they are more... Um, uh, outgoing and sportsmen like than I even knew of like their athleticism mm -hmm. um, and they, the fact that you know they weren't being prissy like at first they like oh we falling in the dirt then it was like let's get it let's <laughs> get it it was so much fun but my knee hurt <laughs> so for that I'm just gonna say I'm a nine so I'm a nine nine ten nine cool how um, are you mentally I am a nine um, just been through a lot the last couple days <laughs> wore down um, finances is a nine. Definitely spent some money. Um, uh, work is a 10. Cause I, like she said, I ain't been there. Um, and I left on a good note. Uh, got an evaluation coming up next week. So we'll see how that goes. Oh, awesome. Um, and physically I feel like a nine. Like I am tired mentally. I'm tired physically. My fucking leg hurts. And I, I, but I, all that, I want to get back to the gym. Like yeah. I was able to go to the gym once out of the three days I was Pause. down there. You were not able to go to the gym. Well, I was able to go to the you room. You were able to work had, out. 
Yeah, I was able yeah. to work out in a room that had three pieces of gym it's, equipment. With the, which only two were working. The gym. Um, we'll get into that later. Yeah. But, um, yeah, the place where we stayed, the, the, the pictures online don't do no justice to what was there. Mm -hmm. um, but I was able to get a workout in, which made me feel good, but I didn't want to go back the next day. I just want to get back to my gym. Although I'm tired, I still have the the uh, desire to get back on schedule. Did um, you feel like working out gave you the stamina for our football game yesterday? Yeah, we was we was running. Yeah, and... I had a lot of stamina. But I'm, me and Mace was playing uh, before y'all came out, so I was you know yeah. halfway tired anyway because okay. me and him was running around. But um, yeah, so I lost my train of thought. You were just saying you ready to get back to the yeah, gym? Yeah, so I'm ready to get back to the gym. I'm gonna rest tomorrow. Like a motherfucker, rest, rest, rest. Mm -hmm. And then Monday, you know, it's right back to it. Um, I, th I told myself, push yourself and go to the gym tomorrow. But I was like, nah, I, I ain't doing yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, I ain't doing that. So I would say a nine, a nine, a ten, and a nine. So we're aligned. If you say so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your wows and woes for this week? Uh, my wow is just being with family. Um, You know, I always love to be with you. And despite um, my enthusiasm not matching yours for like your kids and the kids and this, our kids and your sister, I like to see them. Um, it was good to see uh, your sister. It was good to see the kids, how big they got, how tall they got. Um, you know, it was good to hear their voices and 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 um, and touch them and stuff like that. So um, that's my wow. My woe is that we started off. Um, we were going to drive down, which yeah. we did, and we thought it would be like, you know, 10, 12 hours max. You know, we were thinking that we leave like, what time did we leave on? Eight. Eight, that we would get there around seven or eight, but Nine it was like a 16, latest. yeah, it was like a 16 hour drive to where we were going, and it, it Siri fucked it all up and Man. took us. Um, said they was taking us one way and then she took us some other way and we don't know if she was trying to save us traffic yeah. somewhere else or what but it turned into a 16 hour drive and that was it for me it was like mm -hmm. I am done um, it just took everything out of me and then I did all the driving because it was like I wanted to start off driving you know just mm -hmm. to start off driving plus before we left she hit a fucking light with her car before we left she hit a fucking driveway light. So I didn't want her to drive. So I started driving. Then when I got so tired where I wanted her to drive, it was dark. So it's like she can't see at night. So I had to keep driving. So 16-hour drive, we stopped twice or three times? Three times. Stopped three times. Break, then break, gas, then food. Yeah, break, gas. Uh, break like the bathroom and shit like that. Gas and then some food. And then we made it there. Um, but it was one like o'clock in the morning. One o'clock in the morning. So from eight a.m. to one o'clock in the morning. We was I was driving like it's it was, and I give you your props. You didn't go to sleep once in no. the evening. Usually she would leave me and go to sleep, um, but she didn't. She stayed up with me, and we had a, a, a had nice to. road trip. I had to. So, we uh, laughed so much, yeah. had such good conversations. Like I couldn't leave him because I knew he was tired, and I just appreciated. I driving, and I know this. Like we talked about in the car, just from me working. Um, you know, sometimes I have to travel somewhere. It might be an hour away, maybe a little bit more. And even though you're still, it is still um, stress on your body. So I knew, like, nah, I couldn't leave you in those. I'm off. grateful that I'm able body and able to drive. Um, I, I sometimes I think and zone out driving, but I don't like it at <laughs> all. Like I don't like driving at all. Yeah, I like having the ability to get myself somewhere yeah. without having to rely on someone else. Exactly. But in yeah. those moments, but but when I was young and older, people used to say I hate driving or didn't want to go nowhere or didn't want to take people for rides. It would be like, you know, why the fuck you got a car? But fuck that. Yeah. Like, driving <laughs> sucks. Yeah. It sucks. Um. Yeah, so that's how I feel. Your wows and woes. Um, just you know, piggyback off of you. Thanks. The the just being able to spend time with family. Um, you know whether it was thanks. I mean, the fact that it was Thanksgiving was just a bonus. We got to eat good, but just making memories. Um, throughout the whole week weekend. Uh, well, half a week because we left Wednesday. You know, the car ride again as dreadful as it was. Just having that time. We used to always take road trips with my baby when we couldn't fly. 
um so it kind of took it took me back to yesterday on road trips felt like you know well we would be more prepared because you know we used to do this and now my baby's legal in driving so that takes you know a different level of pressure or stress off of us but um yeah no yeah, we... <laughs> you, that's oxymoron. Yeah, no. Yeah. Um, but, again, my wow was the memories and laughing and just enjoying time together um, with him and then getting to see my babies who I hadn't seen in four... Hadn't seen in person in four months. Um, I seen my sister a little while ago because she had to make a quick trip back up here. But just being able to see them laugh, talk, kiss their faces, hear their voices, you know reconnect with their personalities then we had cook they helped they really helped me cook in the kitchen like really helped me cook um you I'm know sure they enjoyed that too yeah and they they like want you know kids in the kitchen it's like what's next what else can i do it's like oh just just chill like you can't do everything i'll let you know when the next task is is available but um yeah we just really had a great time making those memories and Again, we found a park, you know, my, my sister, you know, had to go to work and waiting for her. We found the park and enjoy some time together. And, you know, just it, that, that was what it was for me. Another chapter in our book um, that included not just us, but people who we love dearly. And my heart, my heart, um, not that my heart would felt empty at all, but, you know, I had like a, a recharge and it felt great. Um, my woe would just be... Um, yeah, the, the the I don't I don't even want to say disorganization because that's not what it was. Again, we thought we had a plan and we had to pivot from that plan. Um, but you know, just having to to make that pivot and the additional um finances that um you know we may incur because of that. But nevertheless, we did what we thought was best and we're home safe and that's all that matters. And sixteen hours turned into an hour and twenty two minutes. <sighs> yes. Yes, like so it was yeah. either a sixteen hour drive or an hour and twenty two minute flight. I I, yeah. I I go for the flight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I go for the flight. So fuck that. Um let's just keep going. How was Thanksgiving? Um, Thanksgiving was awesome. You know, we the food the food is the food, you know. There there's certain things where it's you know, we had Thanksgiving oh, dinner right. and then Friday, you know, we had leftovers and I only had a, a little bit of left because it was like I just want my favorites. The macaroni, the um stuffing. The, the stuffing. I didn't even have sweet potatoes again because I think I had had them too much. Um um uh throughout the year. Not even so much too healthy, but I had some earlier in the week. You remember, I think I made some for dinner last week and I had some. Yeah, I don't know why I just, but the macaroni and the stuffing and then, you know, I had some chicken just because it was chicken. We don't do the turkey. Um, I'm happy my family is all on the same page with that. But that, you know, the meal was good, you know, had, being able to eat with my babies and listen to the things that they like and don't like. Um, but the time was, was, was what was just beautiful. And it really... A couple, maybe a week or so ago, there's some person on social media was like, I can't believe y'all still celebrate Thanksgiving. It just, you know, it's it's the celebration of the um killing, basically, you know, killing of Native Americans and all that, which I don't. It is. Yeah, I would say I, I don't disagree, yeah, you can't with, disagree that with that. It is. At all. But in this season, the meaning behind it in today's modern society was just like, you know what, this is the time I am truly thankful, grateful for these moments. You know, some people do it huge and big and elaborate. Some people do our ours was more intimate. And it's not us. like we wait for a day to be thankful, but yeah. um that day was special because we were around people that were not around um in in a in in a few months. Well all year round. We're we're yeah. not around them. So it was it was it was good to be thankful that they're still healthy, they're still thriving and you know, everybody can see each other and touch each other again. So it's thankful to do that. But it's not like we need that day to be thankful. We're right. thankful every day we wake up. And again, and it made me, you know, not to focus on money at all, but it just really made me appreciative that we had the resources to be able to do what we, you know, wanted to do as far as going to visit them and, see, you know, spend some time with them, Um, you know, that we were able to make it happen. So Thanksgiving for me, this was... Uh, you know, again, the last few years, last year was really special because last year there was a duality in it um, where my family was going through a lot of turmoil. So 
<laughs> we spent Thanksgiving and, and I, you know, even talking to my husband, talking to my therapist leading up to Thanksgiving, I was really torn because my heart was broken because of the turmoil that was going on. And we decided, you know, we're going to make this special for us. It was our first Thanksgiving in our new house. My baby helped me, like, really helped me in the kitchen. I, we, I seen a picture of it the other day in, like, Instagram memories um, but we had a great meal with just, and it turned out to be a beautiful day. I, I remember not being as sad as I thought I was going to be leading mm -hmm. into the day. Cooking wasn't as stressful. Yeah. And, um, so, and it was, it was, it was beautiful, uh, despite everything that was going on, you know, behind the scenes with our families. And so, and then again, like I said, the year before that we had Thanksgiving, the year before that was COVID. So it's like the last four years have all been different. And this was just, you know, another different Thanksgiving that I truly loved um, and and appreciated. We got a chance to see a new place. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just kind of, we always enjoy being somewhere and sightseeing and all that kind of stuff. So it was really a great time. And just checking off another state that we've been to, another place that, you know. Yeah. And of course, we'll go back and you know, visit more and, you know, like have some time for us. But, yeah. Um, um, and I know that again, that whole meal, my baby is not a soul food eater. No. I know that whole meal ain't your favorite thing to do, but how was Thanksgiving for you? Thanksgiving for me was great because, um, I like to see you happy and I knew this was coming and I knew that you were dying to see the kids, like literally dying to see the kids, mm -hmm. like pieces of her fall off. Um, you know, and she can FaceTime them and shit like that, but I know how she feels about the kids and, um, what a hug from them will do for her. So Thanksgiving was great for me to kind of fall back, do what I was supposed to do is, which is get you there and just fall back and just let you, you know, hang out with the kids and do whatever you wanted to do. Like I didn't need your attention or you know, di didn't want to be like in your face or anything. And it was just like, just hang out with the kids and you know, be with them, talk to them, see what's up with them, catch up with them, do all that stuff that, you know, will fulfill you. And, you know, I, I hung out with them too, talked to them. I was like, because like they that. love yeah. Uncle Mar. Yeah, yeah. So it's, I mean, it was good to be around them. You know, little people energy is, is good. Um, it's, it's fun. It's, re it's refreshing. Um, it's good seeing Mace. You know, he got big, he got tall. Mm -hmm. Mackenzie like shot up like, like yeah. real huge, um, big tall toothpick. Arms to me look like Will Air. Oh, okay. like her face. She was standing next to me, and I'm looking like, damn, you look just like your brother. <laughs> like she looks just like Will Air, like right now. Um, yeah. Um, so it and was, Maddie's, you know, growing into Maddie is growing yeah. into herself. Um, so yeah, it was that was a, a cool thing to um to be around this this Thanksgiving and seeing you happy. And, um, you know, you being with your sister, you haven't seen her in a while. So I haven't seen her in a while. So it was just good to hug on and be around um, real family, like real people who we love and real people who love us. So yeah. um, And welcoming us into their home. You know, my sister, she thought, you know, thanked us for coming and being a part of their holiday. You know, she knows how I feel about my babies and I and we love each other, too. So she, you yeah. know, was about seeing her, too, and just having that time. And, and I, it's weird because I think my sister kind of fell back, too, and just let me have time with the kids because she knew how much it meant for them and for me. Um, oh, my God, just uh, feeling a little emotional, whatever. But I just appreciate you know, I, I just appreciate everything. My sister allowing me that space to be with them. Not that she couldn't have been too, but, you know, I guess she figured. From we, afar, though, she could have been like, I'm not doing Thanksgiving or, you yeah. know, like, I'm not, I'm not ready for that or whatever. But, you know, she just was invited us into our house. So it was cool. And she has a very nice house. Beautiful, so, yeah. yeah. She has a very nice house in a very nice area. Um, very serene. Um, yeah. tranquil back there. So yeah, I, I hope that she does. Um, I hope that she, she gets everything that God has for her. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it works out for her because that's where she needs to be. That's where she needs to stay. That's where she needs to call home. Yeah. And that's cool. And it's good to be grown and have resources like as family members, again, if everybody is somewhere else, that's the, the beauty in everybody doing well and, and saving and having resources because you can go and, and meet with yeah. family. That's the beauty of it. And like she said, you can touch another state, touch another city. And, you know, just because family's away and we don't see them all year long, bam, we can 
catch a bus, a train, fly, drive, whatever. Like people, we still can see people. It's not like people, even if they lived in Russia, it's like, all right, we're we going to Russia. Let's, let's to Russia. get our fur coats might, ready. Might be once a year, but you know, we, we going. But yeah. yeah, that's, that's, that's how I always seen our life. Like, you know, we don't have to be on top of each other, but it's good to go to people. It's good for people to come to us. It's good to just everybody to be doing their own thing. So what do you think about those families who like have um like 40 acres, right? Mm -hmm. now, you know how big 40 acres is, right? It's huge. And we got a house 10 acres don't over. Like it. 10 acres what, apart? Don't like it. I don't like the whole compound thing. But 10 acres apart? Mm -mm. I'm like not you, saying you I'm can saying live you and have... never see each other being 10, ten acres apart. 10 acres is 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 good. 10 acres is good. That, that's that's like a, you know, that's a that's town. Far. Yeah, it's a town. Yeah. But you're on the compound. Like, you own 40 acres, and it's like, here's a triangle. Here's us. Here's um, the them. Here's Sierra. We got 10 acres apart. Um, Like, you got to drive and put gas in the car to get there. That ain't a bike ride. Still might be a little close. <laughs> still might be a little close. Again, people don't have to be in different states right but if they were so what but but you know we can't be on the same compound we can't be on the same block we can't be um <laughs> you know we can't be doing that um yeah. so yeah I, that's how i feel about that i know you feel otherwise but i mean don't get me wrong i i, I appreciate you know especially now knowing the flight is like whoop like that you think about we spent the day from 8 a.m until 1 a.m. Whereas, you know, fast forward when we decide we're going to drive, I mean, we're going to fly, we got to the airport at 12 and we're home at 6. Mm -hmm. Like, it's it's not even comparable. Yeah, it costs, but it's like, okay, I'm willing to pay for this convenience. convenience. Yeah. yeah. And that was just, you know, we and we didn't have to check a bag, you know, we but good thing we did time it perfectly. Even if you stepped it back and somebody said you had to walk seven states or you could rent a car and drive, you would like the convenience of driving compared to walking is yeah. like hands down. So the convenience of flying instead of driving is like, are you fucking kidding me? Like an hour and 22 minutes. Yeah. So our Thanksgiving road trip turned into a Thanksgiving flight home. <laughs> <laughs> So, we would still be on the road right now. We wouldn't oh, even yeah. be doing the show. We'd, we'd be probably be making a video in the car or something, like or arguing. Who knows what would have happened in the car driving home another sixteen hours? Yeah, like expecting to be home at one o'clock in the morning. Nah, we ain't doing that. Yeah, we ain't exhausted. Doing that. And then who knows how much traffic we would have ran into? Because again, this is one of the busiest and that's times another that people thing. are I traveling. Think we kind of snuck in the airport and snuck out like on Saturday because I think Sunday again, is going to be yeah, busier. Yeah, because yeah. people got to come home, and I know they didn't come home Friday. People stayed Thanksgiving, stayed yeah, Friday. Yeah. If you visited family or whatever, and Saturday they probably thought everybody's going to travel but on Sunday. The, oh, you know what? I just had an aha moment when I was looking for flights. There were no flights Sunday. Duh. There probably was just no flights available. available. I'm sure there were flights. Because I'm just thinking that's strange. Because when people book their flights to go, to go they visit book round their family, trip. yeah, they're going to book round so trip. So, duh, that makes sense. There are flights coming back to Philly on Sunday. They're it just, just was none available. So, that's why when I went to look, it showed none. Mm -hmm. I just, that was so dumb of me. But it just made me, because I kept thinking... Why ain't no why, that's weird? No flights on Sunday, but it just was no flights available, so that's why I didn't show me because that wasn't an option to buy one. And so that was probably the travel day. Yeah, so we definitely snuck that in. Yeah, that was cool. So Thanksgiving overall was a great, um, great, great holiday. Great couple days away. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, it was good to see you happy. And I have to say this: it was our first time flying since August of twenty twenty two. As y'all know, January 2023, my baby had a health emergency. So this is our first time flying this year, but first time flying since, you know, your incident. I must admit, I was a little nervous thinking like, 
you know, the elevation and how, like, how, how was he going to feel? Like, I, did you feel, like, any way different? Uh, yeah, but I think I was in my own head. So not physically, but mentally you felt, yeah. 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 And I mean, I could feel the pressure, but I felt that all the time. Okay, like, so you, it didn't feel pressure. like anything different no, than pre No, it just felt like regular pressure of going up, ears clogging, chest feeling like you need to go... <sighs> Yeah. Like, and then swallow, and then everything is good. But nothing, like, that, you know, will make you start sweating and panicking and shit yeah. like that. And I'm going to tell y'all this, too, right? We we a little bougie when it comes to, like, hotel accommodations, flights, and all that kind of stuff. Never we don't... stay there again. Well, okay. But I was, I was going to talk about the airline. Okay. <laughs> we, we have flown, we have always flown American in the last six trips that we've taken. Um, we've flown first class once, but when we have it the, on the others, you know, we're, we sit usually in the exit row so we get more leg space. So it's like the fake first class, um, but comfy seats. Like we make sure we're comfortable. We trying to save a little bit of money, trying to make it convenient for ourselves. We flew Frontier. Now, Spirit is out the question. I'm all right with like, you know, finding a little budget airline. But for those of you who have said that, oh, Frontier is, you know, it's um comparable comparable to American it's Airlines. Not. It's not, y'all. It's not. Now, no. don't get me wrong. I'm not gonna say I would never fly Frontier again. And it, 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 there was a big price discrepancy, which is why we choose we chose to go with Frontier. It ain't comparable though, y'all. My no. butt hurt. Like I felt like, damn. I wish I had one of them BBL pillow. Like for for the girl, well for the girls that get the BBLs, y'all gotta have them pillows coming back, or your butt. Your new butt job would be done if you didn't have one of those pillows. My butt hurt so bad. My butt ain't never hurt in an American Airlines seat. No, so plus I, they go back, they recline. The like, seats the didn't fuck recline. Like I didn't know. And again, what this was is up only an hour and twenty two minutes yeah. flight, so that's the only reason why we was doing that. Because but I, I don't am, know how I, else I am really bougie against like airlines and hotels and accommodations where we yeah. stay. I work hard. I go to work every day. I want to. I'm 46 years old. I want to enjoy the luxury of life, not just standard or mediocre shit. Yeah. I just don't. The hotel we stayed in was very mediocre. It was clean, basic, very mediocre, though. Um, You know, it would not have been my first. If the they offer a free breakfast, it's mediocre. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. It was the I best mean, hotel that was the most convenient to my family's home. Um, we could have stayed at a better hotel, which would have been further out. So again, you kind of weigh the pros and cons. Do you want to stay at a better hotel, but and then got to drive, drive further? In. Yeah. So we, you know, it, it was the best decision, um, you know, for a short stay. We, if we was like going on vacation, that would be out the question, no. but it, yeah, it was the best decision for a short stay. So, you know, I, but, but the flights y'all come on now, come on. I, I get, and people have talked. You know things about oh I had I had problems with customer service at American Air or they lost my bag they canceled my flights not going well we have not encountered any issues and not that we had any issues there our flight was delayed for an hour but it, I mean it was we actually needed it because yeah. we got to the terminal <laughs> after <coughs> the original boarding time and we wanted to get some food and stuff so that wasn't even a, a huge issue but just the comfortability. Nah, it ain't comparable, y'all. Sorry. No, it's, it's, not, it's not not comparable at all. It was okay, but not comparable at all. Yeah, and um, we had the first... The, they, they don't again, do first just class, so we did the front row, which gave you that extra leg space for my baby. So I don't know what the rest of the seats felt like um, as far as space and room, but my behind... I, I I go to sleep on a plane like that. Like I don't need, I don't need, last thing I saw her doing the exercise showing you how to fasten the seatbelt, but I was already asleep. Um and I had to like wake up and adjust myself a couple of times cuz my butt was hurting so bad. Yeah, it's not it's not comparable. Um Yeah. yeah. Um so Thanksgiving was great. Um Now for some it. people though, this Thanksgiving was very different. And some of those people would be members of the Combs family. <laughs> what do you think, think Thanksgiving was like in that house? I don't know if Puff ate a turkey this this week. I, I wouldn't be. I would be sick to my stomach. Like fuck that food. I don't want no turkey. Or do you think he wants to put like we are right, we good y'all like we the family like we the ones? Uh, I bet you don't see no pictures of that. He I, might have had family around him because he need family around him, but. I, I don't think he, they was, you know, they, they having Instagram moments. 
Mm. Nah, they not no being pictures. celebratory. No. And I seen one picture of him since all this shit happened. And he was sitting by a pool with his hands like this in one picture and then holding himself in the next picture. And it's crazy how paparazzi can catch you. But those were the two. He was sitting like this with his hands in his head and then he was holding himself like, like hug me. <laughs> like, like, like telling himself, hug myself. Like, and this was after all this shit happened. So if you don't know what we're talking about, we talking about You've Puff. been living under a rock. Yeah, we're talking about Puff and Cassie. Puff, Diddy, Sean Combs, whatever Brother you Love, wanna, whatever you want to call him. And them. allegedly, we can't forget to say that, allegedly, yes. he was um, called to the carpet for rape, drug trafficking. Um, sex trafficking. Sex trafficking, um, drugging, uh, abuse. abuse. Um, yeah, a bunch of stuff in a 36-page... Uh, Civil court suit. documents, yeah. Court documents that you can read online if you Google it or have you want to or even care to. But we did, and we're discussing it. So, um, yeah, he was accused of all this stuff, allegedly. And Cassie settled the lawsuit uh, in 48 hours with an undisclosed amount of money, um, s stating that, you know, she wanted to do so because she had control and she felt good about it. And um, what are your thoughts on... You know, it being a big thing and being all over the internet and all over every platform, and then forty eight hours, you know, after that, it's settled. It's one of those things where it's like I would, I want to be a fly on the wall to hear what was the discussions like in the in the lawyers' office <sighs> because when the allegations were first made, the statement was these are false allegations, and that they said that Miss Ventura Cassie um, had previously tried to blackmail um mr combs with these allegations and like a threat to release it in a book and that he had denied it and then next thing you hear is he's settling so what changed between she she was going to write a book and she tried to blackmail me for money you know and we said no and now is it because oh it went to court now so you were just afraid of the book coming out I'm sorry, you weren't afraid of the book coming out with the allegations, so you denied paying whatever money she was requesting. But now that it's like, oh, she took the legal route, oh, let's shut this down and settle Because, it. well, obviously to me, when something like that happens, it, it, you think to yourself, I broke laws. Because I can deny, you know, everything you say in the book. It's just hearsay. It's just you saying something about me. But when you got proof and you can prove shit, and legal documents that I broke laws, then I'm in trouble. Now I'm thinking about, okay, I, you, I'm you, i caught, like I did something. Like something that you saying I did to you, whether it's beating you up, giving you drugs, or like like you, we, we were talking about earlier, you may have a um, bouncer or a nightclub person or a hotel person who that can, can attest to yeah, this. That yeah, that can corroborate what you're saying. Now it's not just you saying something against me. It's you have proof. You have a witness or somebody like that. So it's different when it's taking a legal route because it's saying, okay, everything that I'm saying, fuck that about. It's like, I know I broke laws in there. I know I did shit that I can go to jail for. So yeah, let me squash that. Allegedly. Allegedly. Now, and it, so that wasn't my initial thought. My thought was, at first I was thinking, okay, he don't want this to get out to his kids too late because if the documents are online even if somebody shut the story down the documents are online yeah. for your kids to read i do feel like that threat of let me just settle because i got the money to do so so let me settle um to avoid this from escalating being all over the news for days and weeks well, like why would you seen. take that as a threat what like he's settling that's not a threat no, no, I'm not saying he, I'm saying he's, he's saying to himself, let me settle this okay. to end this. Because <laughs> we know when these things go to court, look at Johnny Depp and his wife, his ex-wife. Look at the Everything R is red. Look at the R, but I'm, but not just red, I'm saying like the length of time. Mm -hmm. It, it would have, this would have been uh, first page news every day. Look at the R. Kelly case. Look at the Bill Cosby case. I think that's what he wanted to avoid that. At, like that circus, media circus that it would have turned the into media that circus, would have shed so much light on things. Yes. True or not. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Because we talked about you the media circus, but 
also that stuff that's playing in court because it's yeah. a circus it's can it's 400 cameras a day there when you go in when you come out it's a thousand pictures a day but in the inside it's okay What's being you said. did this and it's a witness going to the stand saying yes i was there that night and even this, this, for, this was this yeah. this is a hospital report showing this ass whooping this is a bouncer from this club saying yeah i took cassie somewhere and allegedly but all this stuff can come to fruition and only he would know that. Yeah. Only he know what he did um, in those places. But not only this, I think he's wise enough to know that, let's just say, and I'm not saying that I don't believe some or all, whatever. I'm not even giving my opinion about it. Um, let's just say that he knows everything she's saying is a lie. Let's just say that. But the fact that it's being broadcast he knows in a court of public opinion, your reputation is done. Mm -hmm. You can say all day long, that's not true, that's not true. Once it gets to the public, and then you got to worry about all the deals and stuff that you have with people, which is weird because you know what I thought about? There have been rumors for years about him doing, you know, unscrupulous things. I'm not going to say um, illegal because, you know, like the uh, accusations of domestic violence <coughs> are illegal. People can... Uh, you know, beating Drugging somebody is up. illegal. Yeah, but people can... Um, also, making somebody go somewhere that they don't want to is kidnapping and trafficking. That's illegal. But those are things that are subjective to the circumstances. Like, he can say, okay, and I'm not, again, I'm not saying my opinion in either case. She said he drugged me. He could say, I set the pills there and told her to take them. She could have said no. So, those kind of things are subjective to what is... Like, did he hold your mouth and force the pills down your mouth? Some Which, to be honest with you, I don't think that that happened. I think that it was a situation where you may have taken drugs with him. and Yeah, and for whatever reason, you didn't feel empowered to say no. But then does that turn into being um, him drugging you? Or, you know, he may have made it available to you and you may have felt that pressure to do so. But again, I'm not denying what she's saying. Um, but what I'm saying is... There's been rumors about some of his unscrupulous activities. But when you think about it, who has Puffy really had business relationships with? He had the he has the Uber commercial, which has been playing recently. And the Sean John clothing line has been in phased Macy's. Out. It's been well, it's been, but I'm just saying prior to this, what other partnerships? Because he owns Ciroc. Uh, he owns the Dalyon Tequila. I can't think of you know how other people may have brands Revolt, and stuff, he but owns, he owns that. Um, so that like yeah. So I mean, he is an owner. He's a billionaire. So he is a uh, 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 I mean, I'm sure some of these companies like Dalyon and stuff, he's partners with because maybe, they even yeah. they even because the get your alcohol in places. I mean. That's like a blueprint from Jay to get your alcohol and play. You can own 100% of something and don't have it everywhere. Or you can own 50% of something and have it across the right. world. So I'm sure he's partners with somebody with the alcohol. But even Delian said they're backing up off of him. So but that's you're a, right. Who, Throughout like the, his investors? Because that, I guess the team that he's with are not um, going to have him on commercials, not going to have him on Instagram posts and, and, and social media, you know, sh shit like that. So that's what I'm saying. I thought promotion he owns for. that. I'm yeah, sure he's says, an owner in it. I don't think he 100% owns it, is, is my point. He might own okay. the majority of it. But if his investors back out... Yeah, then that's... Because I'm, I'm sure he's not backing the whole thing. Although he promotes it like everybody else. But, right. I mean, he promotes it more than everybody else. But I'm okay. sure he's not the sole owner of the Delion. Okay. Um, I just want to see... Because I know with Ciroc, too... He, you know, that was something, you know, we just going to do a little bit of research. Okay. Producing, fan, yeah, right. It's where like, uh, Ciroc is owned by a British-based multinational alcoholic beverage maker, Diageo. So, to your point, yeah. it's probably a majority These people owner are, like have it. their liquor in France and all across the world. And, and you got to get with these people to, to get your alcohol out That's like, like that. the, um... LVMH. Yes. Some people may not know. That's Louis Vuitton, Moet, and Hennessy. Just think about how big of a scope, and they go under the, the brand name, the corporation name of LVMH. But think about the different segments of life Louis Vuitton, Moet, and Hennessy fall under. Mm -hmm. Like, I that's a huge umbrella. That sued, but yeah. Yeah. Um, for De Leon, it's uh, founded by Brent Hawking. 
uh, oh, it was purchased by the same company. So uh, Sean Puff Daddy Combs and Diageo equal ownership partners. 50-50. So 50-50, but you think about and, it. Because you, you have to to get the liquor off, to get it in shelves in all the stores. Like Puff not going to do that just a black owner himself. You'll be limited. But yeah. when you partner 50-50 like him, him, C, and J did, and it's like now your ace of spade is everywhere. And I think for most liquor companies, you have to have some kind of correlation or tie back to France. Yeah. Because yeah. that's where <laughs> the, all a lot that, of that shit stuff comes is, from. Yeah, the yeah. weird names and shit like that. Yeah. yeah. Now, even when they have Coromino, who is owned by, or Kevin Hart. Ha no, Harris. that's Kevin Hart. Um, it says Kevin Hart and, and an 11th generation tequila producer, Juan Domingo um, Juan Domingo Beckman. So because been, you have been, to have some they've been partnership. They've been tequila for 11, gener 11 times. That's 120 years. Yeah. Generation is 20 years. Like 120 years that family been doing tequila. Yeah, that's partnering with them. Yeah. So that makes sense. Because then you, you have... Casamigos, the same thing. But I, George Clooney, he sold that. But same thing. He had to partner with some people who mm -hmm. can get that shit worldwide. So what do you think... Um, Hold on, I got a question. Okay. What, do you, what is the... Because I don't like the civil suit versus a criminal suit when it comes to rape and, um, and domestic violence. All right. So what's your thoughts as a woman who, if somebody raped or you know hit you with dv and you was in a, a domestic violence relationship um and you was being raped and stuff like that can money like just quell that is like how because it makes men look at a, a, a situation and this is coming from a male perspective it doesn't make you um question what happened to you and my heart would go out to to cassie if that stuff really happened to her but it does make me think that Damn, there's women out here that I see who are don't have a um a dollar to in the fight. Mm -hmm. If they get raped, if they get um uh, if that happens to them, they want their guy to be the the guy who did that to be in jail. It's a lot that goes on with that. When did money just start to to just take that away? Where it's like, okay, if I have a certain amount of money. I'm not pressing charges. So I think there are some logistics of the situation that we are not privy to. And some of that um, may be statutes of limitation. Um, and also from just rumors of hearing allegations or allegedly that there was an NDA. So whatever activities took place because they were in a relationship or, and she, or she at least has a bit, even if it wasn't a romantic relationship, let's say she felt like she was forced into it, right? That it was a business relationship and there was an NDA where she couldn't speak out up to a certain amount of time. And that may have coincided or close to the statutes of limitations of some of the crimes. So just looking up statutes of limitations by state, and this is for rape, for the state of New York, because they lived in New York and also California. But for the state of New York, um, they eliminated the statutes of, uh, it says, have they eliminated the statute of limitations for all felony sex crimes? No. The statutes of limitations, um, uh, has a statute of limitation for some of its felony sex crimes, for example, rape in the second degree. Um, so this really doesn't give um, a specific so time frame. So I heard frames. that the, the, the reason why the court documents were available is because she went to court and filed this stuff because she was, I think, six weeks away from the um, statute of limitations, of limitations expiring. expiring. So now that it was in court and it's all documented, that's null and void. So we're not worried about statutes and limitations no more. Either you want to proceed with this case or you don't. Right. Because you, you, but that's how it got public. That's how it's documented. It's because you knew six weeks from now, statutes of, 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 of limitations is going, is going to be in effect. So let me put this out there now. Let me get this to the courts now so that it's documented. So now it's either, do you want this to be a criminal case or a civil case? So with statutes of limitations, does that mean that you can, you cannot be convicted of a crime after a certain amount of time? Mm -hmm. No, so, it means that the person can't, yeah, like you can't press charges now. Well, even if I do, you can't be convicted of it. So, well, there's so, not going to be any charges. Well, what but what I'm saying, listen, go with me. Six weeks, so she beat the statute of limitations. But if he can't be convicted, so if this, the timeline is up to here. No, if it's charges filed, it's statute of limitations. It's not when you're convicted. 
it's charges filed. You can have murder charges. To, I mean, you can have um, rape charges on you a day before statutes of limitation to end it. You can be convicted after that. It's just the paperwork is in before the statutes of limitations when the charges were on you. Oh, okay. So I, I did. I it's got nothing to do with your with when you were when you were convicted. It's when you were charged. So okay. when she, that's why she went to court early to put this stuff out there because it seems like she was going to go ahead with it because it was all over the place. And you can read this stuff and it was like, oh, he did this. He did all this stuff is criminal. Right. But, you know, and talking with the lawyers and stuff, it just seems like how, so I, how I does money it. fix rape? I How don't does think money it fix? does. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way no, when I, I say it. fix. I mean, how does it just make it go away? Because I was always brought up since I was a little boy that that's the worst of the worst. And if a woman has that Any happen kind of to her, crime. yeah, like that that dude, like you're a rapist. Like so you're a rapist. Is, but this is my thing. And again, you don't I, get to get off of being paid. Like even if you was married who lived up the block and got raped. And you're, you were in a bad situation and your rapist wanted to give you $10,000 and you're really in a bad situation. Are, are you going to take that? But I, so while I understand how there can be mixed emotions about it, I think we have to or we should look at some of the facts about the timeline and and, and looking at the possible outcome. So just let me get mm -hmm. this. So get your shit on. she filed the charges. And he comes and say, okay, like, all right, I, we can settle, right? Because she took back, I think, the criminal charges, then filed the civil case. Mm -hmm. So with the criminal charges, you got to think to yourself, okay, we're going to go through with this case. The fact's going to be out there about him, but he could get off. And there could be no repercussions. He could get off, regardless if it is true from sun up to sundown. I'll give you that. The court system don't always work in exactly. the that it's supposed he to. He could get off. <laughs> So, the, the, out of that, who wins? Now, well, he's, he's done because his, all his stuff is out. Yeah, but if, so but, but, but like, if at the end it says he was proven innocent, then he has that leg to stand on. Maybe not in the court of public opinion, but when we talk about the business part like we were talking about, he could you, say... You're not convicted of anything, right? You weren't convicted. He could hold on to that, like, see, I told y'all he was li she was lying. You know, and he could resume life... As as is. Mm -hmm. Now, if you leave it in a case where this is a civil suit, it almost, and I'm not saying that just because somebody settles that they are, it's an admission of guilt. I, it could be that it could be them just not wanting to go through the rigmarole of the court case. But now is where the court of public opinion and you leave it in limbo. Right. Because we don't go to court. Now you leave everybody to assume. Now when it comes to the business part, it can hurt you. Because you were never proven innocent. All we have is these allegations out here. We got to cut ties. Because it didn't go to court. And right. now we had, we, we don't want to face because the chances all that's of left the blowback. Because all the court of public opinion. And but, now I'm going to also hurt you where, I'm going to also hit you where it hurts. Which is the money. Because again, going through with the legal situation... You could come out on the side of being innocent. But other people, if you're just, say us, and, and, and you know, I know how we feel about them, so let's not say us. Let's just say regular people or as business partners. You have these allegations on you. They don't go to court. They, the documents you can read so everybody can see it. You don't get charged. You pay the money. So there's no, you're no, there's no conviction or anything. But what's, what's left for people to, to, to assume about you? And your character, because you can say, okay, I didn't do those things. There was no conviction. Paying money is not really an admission of guilt. But, but people are going to assume that it is because people are going to so say, how do, you just, how do you pay? Why, why you pay her off? Because, you, okay, I didn't want to put my family through a trial and all this shit like yeah, that. Yeah, but you in the court of public opinion, people are going I know, to say. I know what the court of public opinion, I'm talking about the legal part. So, I mean, what's that leave for people to be like? Like, what do we think about this guy? Did he do these things? Did he not? I think people are going to have their opinion both ways of saying... You Whereas know, though if it went to court and you was convicted, it's like, okay, he did these things. It's R. Kelly situation. But see, she, that's not up to him. That's why she took that option off the table because Say she... Say if R. Kelly, he could have he could have settled with his... his, his um. A, victims. His victims. I couldn't get the word. I was about to say abusers. I'm sorry. His <laughs> victims. Um... 
and he paid $50 million, $100 million. People would be like, he did it. He guilty. That's why he paid them off. Just like Michael Jackson, who paid those families who were accusing him of touching. That's why that... But his shit wouldn't be that, off the radio. His shit wouldn't be off the... The, the um all the all the streaming platforms he, he still would be working because there was no conviction is what I'm saying so what's that lead like you said it's limbo it leads people to be like yeah they accused him of something but it never really came to fruition so am I supposed to be looking at him like a rapist when they he not been convicted of a rape so I'd be looking at him like a a domestic abuser because he hasn't been convicted of domestic abuse. But I think, and I, think, I can't look at him, him paying the money as admission of guilt. But I think when it comes to business, um, businesses are worried about the court of public opinion right. as well, which is why Macy's phasing out his mm -hmm. line being in his store after two decades. Yeah. And again, he hasn't been proven guilty because it hasn't gone to court. Some people, but they are worried. Exactly. It they are worried about the impact is going to have on their brand. I think in this day and age where social media and people can be so vocal, we see with, um, I don't know if y'all are familiar with um, Joanna and Chip and they had from Magnolia Network and they had like a partnership with Target and because of backlash of, uh, on Target about them carrying um, LGBTQ apparel for children, people felt like, Chip and Joanna being a Christian family, y'all should be against this. They bombard Joanna's social media with, why aren't you speaking out against Target? Why don't you? Why do you still have a partnership with Target? And that's on a small scale. Can you imagine Macy's, yeah. a huge corporation they would have like Macy's? They would have protests. Yeah, People so would protest. and you in the communities that you're talking about, you're talking about women who sex trafficking is huge. It's a huge. Um, plight that people are fighting against victims of domestic of vi vi domestic violence victims of sexual abuse so they don't want to face the backlash from these people so it's like like you said no you haven't been proven guilty but it stinks too bad so Cassie this may have been a chess move not checkers like she knows so the blowback is going woman, to happen how do, how, how do, and I'm speaking from your perspective and then just what you think a, a group of women would think about her taking the money if you really was raped and was beat on. I mean, this, the because again, if you had a, a, and I'm just, I'm trying to put it in the simplest form. I'm not trying to trivialize no, I uh, anything, it. but if you was Keisha down the street and you was in a bad situation, didn't have money and you was raped and your rapist was, was like, okay, but like, you, like it could be a civil suit where you could get money and not put them in jail. Would you do it? But see that 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 not even on it could be a big situation like a Diddy where me as a woman something happened and somebody tells us you know like look it might not be thirty bill will she get thirty million? 30? Well, they said it was more than that because she she put the kibosh on the book. She was asking for thirty. She put the kibosh on the book. Some people they think it might have went to fifty. So so let's just say somebody say look we'll give you five million dollars to let this go away. I don't know if. In life, that is a good decision to make. I feel like my, um, I don't want to call it stubbornness. I would want to pursue the court case. My determination for, no, I want you convicted for what you did to me. Now, again, in a, you know, once you're sitting in jail, I might think 10 years from now, damn, I wish we got that $5 million. But but I think your mental health would be way more important if you really and we talking about rape here, yeah. the ultimate thing. If you really was forcefully raped, I don't think it's a dollar amount you could put. That's and again, why I'm, I'm not a woman, so I don't want to speak out of turn. That's why I'm asking one. But where, where does but, the but, line but, but, but draw? Let's, at? Let, let's not do that. Men are raped. Let's say if it was a situation no, where men, if I was raped, are you going to fuck the that's jail? That's why I said I would want to. There's no and hundred again, million dollars you can give me. Yeah. I don't want no civil suit. Like she said, my determination and my uh, my soul has been has been broken. And you're going to go to jail for that. You're going to pay for that. There's not, and you're not going to pay with a dollar amount because no no dollar amount is going to make me feel good yeah. about saying yes to you no what i do question not question i wonder why didn't she pursue both because the and civil I, suit I, i'm asking that because too. like we think about oj right there now they Maybe found that's in the civil suit that you can't pursue criminal charges you can't write a book can't do any of that if you want this amount of money 
But what I'm saying is OJ, it was, well, they didn't file charge, like the, the county filed those charges. The family didn't. The family came after the fact. So I, yeah, I don't, and, and this is another thing too, right? That we have to think about with the Cassie situation. She may not had any, um, hardcore evidence. Now there was some, in the, it said that her mom had some pictures of situations where she was beat. Um, rape, you you know, it's kind of hard to prove that years later other than your word against the other person. No, because if you went to the hospital and had a rape kit if, done. but okay. you, you didn't, well, you that's didn't. Why I said if. Yeah, so that's what I'm thinking. If you don't have that hardcore evidence, <laughs> you can know that it happened and there could be no way for you to prove it. The other person could know that they did it, but they could know that there's no way to prove it. Let's because just let's say, think about this. You go to the hospital. Let's just if say, you, but if you weren't ready then to say who did it, you but probably let's just say the ho- you go to the hospital beat up and say like because she's Cassie, she goes in as Rachel. Okay, whatever. I'm under a pseudonym, and they got it. They document stuff when you're beat and bruised and black eyed and stuff like that. And beat them. They take pictures. So even if you never come back. And they don't know who the fuck Rachel is because you were Cassie and you were in a different state. But I don't think she if ever you... went to the hospital based okay. on the based on the documents. She like there was one situation where, you know, allegedly she was beat and he hid her away at like, you know, a nice house to like, okay, stay away from people so people won't see you. Another situation he like sent her to his house in Beverly Hills or wherever it was, and his son was there and he's like, Okay, go to the other side of the house, put more makeup on so my son don't see you. So I don't think she ever went to the hospital. That's the problem. Okay. Now I did in the documents it did say her mom had some pictures, but again, that is speculation because he could say her mom took these pictures. I don't know what happened to her. I, okay. So that's, that's I'm saying, possible. The fact it's that just hard no for me. It's hard sense for me that to... It's not a video <sighs> right? of him beating her. But it's hard for me to think that if you were being abused and raped and all this stuff happening to you, that there's no evidence that you might have of one or two pieces of evidence that says what you're saying is plausible. Like no, I think you have people that can corroborate it, but then you got to think about the lawyers of him saying. But you might have the something say in your phone. Say. You might have something in your phone of a text of "Why'd you hit me? Why you made me mad?" Like anything in your phone from years ago that may corroborate a conversation that y'all may have had about the situation, or why you had hit me, or why'd you make me sleep with this person? Anything that says. That what you're saying is plausible because, again, it has to come out in court. But I can't imagine her having no evidence of what she's saying if she brought it to court. If she brought it to documents, I would think I have some some ammunition, some, some bullets yeah. that if the shit hits the fan, I could fire off and say this and this I can prove. Yeah. Well, why because why it- get there? Because if he never says if he says I'm not paying, fuck this, I'm not paying. Let's go to court. You're going to get to court and look like a fool because you well, can't no, prove shit. No, I think she was ready. I think she has what she has, but you got to think you that's a hope because we already established like it's yeah, very possible that he could get off and everything you're saying could be true. But as we see, this is kind of like, do you think we're headed towards like a Me Too phase two? A Me be- Too wave two? A, yeah, Me Too wave two. Yeah, because since this has happened, his old accu. It's old bad boy executive uh, executive Harvey Pierre was um, was brought in on some 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 allegations of sexual assault and rape. Um, Jimmy Iovine is back in '93. Eric Adams, the mayor. Jamie Fox. Um, a lot of people have um, Aaron Hall, and we all know. You know, there's history with Aaron Hall and how nasty he used to be. Yeah. These Vlad interviews are popping up all over the place where I think he was on Vlad where Vlad first started and you could just say anything because he on there talking about like reckless shit. But the crazy thing is you see how Jamie Foxx shut it down, said I didn't do this and I'm going to sue for defamation. I think that's the energy that people expect to see from an innocent person. And I ain't saying, again, you know, Jamie, guilty, innocent, whatever. But I think at least that's the energy that people expect to see when you say, nah, this person lying. And I'm now I'm suing you yeah. for defamation of character right. because you're lying. His, on me. his exact words was that situation, that scenario never happened. So, yeah.
I, I would come firm like that yeah. too. And we know there and have I'm been coming at you. There have been situations that last year with the Super Bowl, Michael Irvin, yep. a woman accused him of sexual assault. And it took some time, but there was clear video that Which showed she absolutely he was, was lying. Pulled from NFL Network, pulled from his job for like six months. Yeah. Till a videotape was shown of him not even touching this lady. So again, you see the blowback that organizations, corporations are afraid it of. Too bad. Just the allegations is we got to remove and them. The we NFL can't have is, our name yeah, attached a to shield. you. They're, they're not doing that. Yeah. And plus, so, they got players that beat on women. They can't. Nah, they're not doing that. So, again, I think, you know, with, with the energy that Jamie Foxx showed is the energy that people expect to see from somebody when they are claiming their innocence. And that is what Puffy did not show. You know, these legal statements from the lawyer that are, just seem very PC, you know, even this, you, the, the amicably resolved, we, they've come to an am. How do you amicably, amicably yeah. um, settle with a person? Y'all didn't think about the word choice because there's nothing amicable we can come to about if you me. are falsely accusing me of something. And then, yeah, on the other side, even Cassie's lawyers, there's no amicable solution. Y'all should have uh, used the thesaurus to pick a different word because that was like, huh? I'm not being amicable. Even if I'm choosing to to settle out of court to pay you, we're not putting amicable That's why in it this. was so hard for me to grasp that. <laughs> is <Bless> because you. <laughs> every time, <clears throat> uh, thank you, I've seen a rape case unfold. It doesn't end amicably. Never even put seen that word involved. So it's like, damn, you accuse somebody of rape and drugging you and beating you. How the fuck do you solve that amicably? Or somebody accuses you of these things that you say you didn't do. How do you resolve that amicably? It, there is no amicable no. situation between us. I'm mad that you lied on me if, I, if I'm if i saying that I didn't do this. Or I'm mad that you did these things to me if I'm saying you are doing this. Whatever decision we come to, it ain't an amicable one. Amicable means, we go, amicably means a loving, peaceful, cordial situation we're walking from. Yeah. Wrong, bad word choice. So that's just how I feel about that. That's when a mediator says, you know what? Y'all don't need me. Go in the room and talk and settle this amicably. That's what they do in, in like fucking in child support court and, or shit like that. Like y'all sitting here, y'all really can have a conversation. Mm -hmm. That's amicable. Not you rape them, go in the room and talk it over. Yeah. Like what the fuck are we talking about here? You ready for three grand? Yeah. Um, Tiffany Haddish got locked up in a DUI. Um, shout out to Tiffany. This is the second time she was pulled over and was asleep on the steering wheel. You know, I did some research. My wife was saying she hopes she don't have a dr uh, drug or a alcohol problem. I don't hope. I hope she doesn't have one either. I know she has joked about drinking a lot, um, and she had a rough t um, a teenage life. She comes from a foster home and all that kind of shit. So you know, she might have some stuff that she's still still dealing with. Plus the airy spare shit. That, yeah. you know, she went away for like a year or two over that shit. Like, it lost a lot, a lot of jobs, a lot of money. So, I, I don't know. But let me let falling me, asleep at the wheel is serious. Let me say this. I think she does have an alcohol problem. I hope, and, and I'm not saying this lightheartedly, I hope it's just alcohol and that it ain't deeper than that. Falling asleep at the wheel, you know, that kind of gives the implication, like, are you taking pills? Is that heroin? Like, what are you doing? Are you mixing you something doing? with alcohol? Because you can't be that. It's a lot of people driving around, not that it's right, drunk all the time. And they ain't falling, falling asleep. Falling asleep at red lights. Like, what? To like, the point where the drinking? cops come? Yeah. Like, and you know, did you, do you know what the difference between a DUI and a DWI is? Driving while intoxicated is only alcohol. Yeah. DUI is driving under the influence, can be weed, can be alcohol, can yeah, be Yeah, it can pills, be drugs or alcohol. So anything. it really is right. And in some states, for whatever reason, they just choose to use DUI, but it doesn't imply that it doesn't mean it is alcohol, it doesn't mean it is drugs, but you're under the influence of something. Because right. that's what I was like, why did they say DUI and not DWI? You would think driving while intoxicated it would be used that if they know that you're drunk. But maybe they use that because they don't know until they do like the a blood yeah, test. Yeah, and you just under, you got to do a toxicology report and see what you're under the influence of. Yeah. Now, if they do one and you got alcohol, cocaine, opioids in your system, that's a whole different ballgame. You know, I, I hope that she doesn't. And again, that shit will be public record. 
I hope that she doesn't crash out, no pun intended, in the sense of the Hollywood fame, that fast life, that hard life, that um, the drama, the stress that comes with it. Like, I would hate to see, like, a, you know, she's found, like, one, she crashed and killed somebody or killed herself under the influence or she was found unresponsive or something like that because of an overdose like i just would hope that that this didn't um snowball and turn into something more detrimental detrimental for her i hope she has some people in her life that really love her whether it's from hollywood or non-hollywood that can grip her up and love on her because that ain't that ain't a good look that it is so dangerous i y'all my friends and family know i i think drunk driving you are stupid yeah. and i and guess i've done it before so i'm it's not like saying that you know do. i've never <laughs> like we've never had a couple drinks when we used to drink and then drive now, i'm not like pissy drunk or nothing but i think now in this day and age not when it comes to driving not wearing your seatbelt, drunk driving, and letting your kids be in the back seat without being strapped in is stupid. Mm -hmm. Like, you're just dumb. When I see y'all Instagram videos and y'all driving along and y'all got the babies leaning or the kids leaning up on the front row or y'all got a little, you know, three-year-old in the front seat, like, what the hell is wrong with you? Yeah, I was just talking to somebody about this because a friend of mine from work had a family member who was in a car accident, was T-boned on the passenger side and had his two-year-old in the front seat. On the passenger side. Yeah. And I was, and they was telling me about it. And I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with him? And he was like, I don't, I don't know. He just had his kid in the front. Like, you got to be in a car seat, bro, because of shit like this. Like, he was T-boned on the passenger side with a two-year-old in the, in the front seat. Sometimes I see videos and I be wanting to comment to people like, put the kid in the back or make your child wear a seatbelt. Or, or maybe he wasn't too, but he was young. I don't know. He yeah. was he's a young kid. I know he was under ten. Or you see kids in the back and they on their knees looking out the back window. And I be wanting to con like cause now whatever you post about, I don't care. That's all I say. But I told myself the mob. But guess what? I I have commented on like I'm sure my sister one time she been driving and I could hear the damn seatbelt thing um ding and I tell her, put your seatbelt on like that that's just so stupid. But drunk driving is so reckless, so dangerous. Not only could you ruin another family's life you can ruin your own family's life by killing yourself like it's so irresponsible but you know i i pray that she recovers um if, if there's any addiction that she has or i hope this has scared her to know nah i can't keep moving like this yeah we don't want to see you, you coming from a, shows get a driver we don't want like, to see you in a third one like order an uber me. order a lift like it, it's it, it's just that simple like just call a lift to take you home if you've been drinking second gram um, Derek Chauvin was stabbed. Uh, that is George Floyd's murderer. Mm -hmm. I'm not surprised though. Fucking... I, I, I'm, I'm surprised that it's, I think I might be surprised that it took this long. And they said that like the guards had <laughs> to take, arm there. yeah, cause I don't like that. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't like physical, you know, the physicality. Um, they said that they, the guards had to take some life-saving measures. So that's what happens when you stab. Especially yeah, but in jail because the knives aren't knives. They aren't like, clean cuts. They, They're bad. And somebody's doing yeah, it like in a like, place that's like they probably got stabbed four or five times real quick. Like it could be an ice pick, which is poking your fucking liver and lungs, or it could be some piece of a bed. Like it's not a fucking clean blade going through. I'm not laughing at this, but you know that uh Whitney Houston song, somebody commented and said, It's not right. But it's okay. The internet is undefeated. Hey man, you get what your hand is called for, and and, and you reap what you sow. I don't and wish you, death on nobody. I ain't but... wishing death on nobody, but I know of people that, and again, I know of people that have hurt people and and took people's lives, and then months later, their lives was 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 gone. Yeah. So it it you put out that kind of energy in the universe. That shit will come back to you. Now, whether you dodge it when it comes back to you is another thing. But it will come back to you. You can't be growing up or just be a person giving out all this hate and expect no hate to come back to you. Or giving out all this violence and no violence to come back to you. You murdered somebody. You sat on somebody's neck and you, 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 the whole world watched you murder a person. And there's people who want retribution for that and i'm not saying it's right or wrong but you're in prison bro that's just how the inside works we didn't make it up that's just how it is you should know that you was a fucking cop 
So that's how the inside works. Mm -hmm. There's going to be, even in protective custody, there's going to be guards that turn their back for pay. That Because there's guys in there that's, that's, that's been there that, that you know, this, that's how the inside works. Um, last gram. Um, 702, R&B group from the 90s, y'all y'all remember. Um, they had some bangers, too. They were short-lived, but they had songs that you hear. And it's like, oh, it take you back. They were like good throwbacks. Um, but they've had um, a traumatic history. Um, so it was three girls. It was uh, two sisters and another girl, um, Orish and Irish, who were twins. And there was another girl, Lamisha. Um, so, um, uh, and I'm sorry. And then they replaced one of them with another girl. Um, so let me rewind. Orish died years ago, one of the twins. And then recently, um, Irish was another, the other twin. She died like a couple months ago. Um, and then their mom, they, their last sister, Lamisha was left and, their down their mom their mom died like a week and a half ago mm. so you think this sis this girl she lost a sister then a sister then her mom and it just made me think like yeah it's a horrible traumatic story and then one of the other girls from the group um i think her name i for, I, I can't remember her name right now she lost her mom um a couple months ago she was like a replacement member in the group but it just made me think, wow, this is a traumatic story for them. The holiday season, we really got to remember to be kind to people because... It's always been like that, remember? Yeah. And it, 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 it's it's like, yeah, it's always been like that. And it's not till I got grown that I started to recognize that it's sad for some people. Exactly. Like we're celebrating. We're enjoying our family. We're loving on them. And for some people, it's hard because... Mm -hmm. Especially, I mean, death is hard whenever it's your first Thanksgiving or your first Christmas or your first New Year's. All those firsts with missing that person are extremely hard. Um, but when it happens close, it almost like ruins, you know, those holidays for you because it's like, okay, damn, like my mom died the night before Thanksgiving while we was prepping dinner. You know what I mean? So it's like those kind of things that happen in people's life. And it just was a reminder. I mean, again, 702, they're not a current, you know, current generation may not even be familiar with them. But just seeing that headline and thinking of, you know, losing your sister years ago, then losing your other sister and then losing your mom. And it just made me think people really do die from heartbreak. Now, I don't know if yeah. the mom was sick or what the situation was, well, but did. to lose a child and then you die a couple months later. And that's your second child. It just makes and that me whole think. twin thing is 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 in there too because she lost her sister, which was a twin. Yeah. And it's like you know how twins. I think they are. had like some kidney disease or something that both of them I think had that you know she and she succumbed to. Um, succumbed to. But just hearing that the mom died, the first thing I thought was she died from a broken heart. And then the sister is left to have to mourn. And, you know, I, I, her friend had put the post up to, like, tell everybody, you know, and is supporting her. And I hope they have other family members around. But for anybody out there that's grieving, and sometimes grief is not just about loss um, as a result of death. Sometimes we grieve the loss of people that are still living on this earth. And it's it's just it's one of the, it's one of the unfortunate facts of life, but it is indeed a fact of life. Mm -hmm. And we just wish everybody a healing happy holiday season. You know, uh, uh, and healing is not what you always say. Healing is not linear. It's a journey. It you'll is. you'll feel that oh, I'm doing great, There's and no you'll have game. a trigger that'll make you feel like you regress some. But I just uh, I really wish that people. If you're not on the journey yet, you join the journey. Um, lately, I've been really, I've always been vocal about like mental health and stuff, but I've been more vocal about things that I've been doing and, you know, things that my therapist have been saying to me. And so many people have been really responsive. Some of y'all have been in my DMs. Some of y'all even asked like, you know, on uh, the post and stuff like, oh, I don't have no referrals for mental health specialists. Like I, I know my therapist, I so I don't have like referrals or anything like that. Um... But some have, people have been responsive, whether you like 
my therapist or not, it doesn't matter to me. But the fact that you are at least starting to seek or think like, hmm, maybe I should take this step. That makes me happy. That makes me happy that people are think at least thinking about it, whether it pans out for you or you got to find somebody else or whatever the situation is. But healing um, is, is available for all of us. And I just, we just wish everyone a healing I'm not going to say healed because, again, there is no yeah, ending. there's no healed. A healing, happy holiday season. You know, Thanksgiving just passed. We're moving into the Christmas um, holiday. Whether you celebrate or not, you know, winter time period, whatever you want to call it. And then into the new year. Being able to go into the new year with a refreshed mindset um, can be a great feeling. So I wish that for everyone. Mm -hmm. So do I. Piggyback on what she said. Yeah. Um. Let's do a wrap. Back to the podcast episode one five zero coming to a close. Again, you guys can catch us on Facebook, Act to the Podcast dot com, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Podcast Index, Podcast Addict, Pod Chaser, Player FM, and fuck if I told y'all earlier, iHeartRadio and Apple Podcasts. They're the most watched platforms for podcasts. And guess who on there? iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts. Check us out. Act to the podcast, episode 150. If you fuck with us, you fuck with us. If you don't, you should. Peace.